If you're a fan of the animated shows, mainly Rebels, then you've seen some of these characters before, but for some of you, you may be confused as to who these people are. You see, a lot of these characters are from the animated Rebel show, and at first glance, you may think that it looks like a children's show compared to the past Star Wars animated show The Clone Wars. The animation is a little softer, the dialogue a little bit more straightforward, and the plots less deeply intertwined with the overall lore. That, however, is just the first season. It was a little similar to The Clone Wars in that way, growing into itself as time went on. Each season improved on the last. And while it began very child friendly, as did the Clone Wars, it was soon creating a detailed plot arc of its own. Star Wars Rebels focuses on Ezra Bridger, an orphan living on the planet Lothal, also central to the story. He lives as a pickpocket, con artist, and thief, making a living by stealing from anyone he comes across. For him, it's all about survival. He's soon to be picked up by the Spectres and their ship, the Ghost. From there, he'll be transported into the world of a localized rebellion, learn to be a Jedi, and develop into the solid young leader he needs to be. Along the way, he'll be led astray by characters characters such as Maul, Hondo and Naka, Thrawn, and even Palpatine. Nevertheless, he's always guided back to the light through his master Kanan Jarrus, Ahsoka Tano, and visions of Yoda and his deceased parents. I'll focus on some of the story arcs one by one in this video. Of course, there are too many episodes to talk about them in detail. Instead, I'll just consider the main storylines and how they pan out across the four seasons and 75 episodes of Rebels. This isn't an in-depth explanation of everything that happens, rather it's a summary of the key plot points. Now, let's get into it. Ezra's character is actually fairly typical for the Star Wars universe. They either have little to no relationship with their parents, or their parents died. Anakin loses touch with his mother and has no biological father. Luke has no memory of his parents before his guardians, Owen and Beru, are slaughtered. Leia's in the same situation, with her adoptive parents dying on Alderaan. Rey's parents die protecting her, as do Jin Ursos. Orphans aren't unusual characters in this galaxy. Where Ezra really comes into his own as an original character is the rebellious streak. When we first meet him, he's a slightly irritating, overconfident boy. The Spectre team cautiously weapons him as one of their own, and one by one, they begin to trust him more and more. This this slowly wears him down and he becomes a kind, giving individual. As the show progresses, he develops different relationships with each one of the team. He learns leadership from Kanan and Hera and gets direct support and strength from the other three. Eventually, he's led astray by Maul, very nearly to the dark side out of his frustration, hatred, and loneliness. However, the combined calming influences of Kanan and Ahsoka bring him back. Although he almost makes a serious mistake, they save him. Although in the show, it looks like Ahsoka is dead, at least for now. Later, Kanan, having been blinded by Maul, sacrifices himself to allow the ghost crew escape. After his passing, the entire Spectre squad mourns him. Ezra's main struggles lie around his family. His parents were taken by the Empire, and although he wouldn't find out for many years, they died in prison. All his life, he's fought hard against the concept of family, finding it too hard to bear to lose those he loves. The topic is rarely brought up through the first season, and what it is, Ezra immediately shuts it down. It's only when they find out about their deaths and Maul leads him astray that the problem is ever fully addressed. Although he understandably finds this almost impossibly difficult, he eventually accepts that his mother and father are gone, and nothing can bring him back. He has a new family in the Spectres and a broader Rebel Alliance instead. Dead. Initially, he struggles with the responsibility but rises to the occasion, becoming a leader, tactician, and inspiration to everyone around him. Ultimately, he, in a way, sacrifices himself by calling the Purgle to carry him, Thrawn, and the Imperial fleet into the unknown regions of space. Another key arc is the growth of the Rebellion. Rebels shows part of how the Rebel Alliance grew from various pockets of resistance to the Empire, and how they united under characters such as Mon Mothma, Bail Organa, and finally, his adopted daughter Leia. On Lothal, there isn't much going on in terms of rebellion, not visibly at least. Ezra later learns that his parents were arrested by the Empire for running a sort of pirate radio station where they promoted liberation and unrest against the Empire. It's one of the many tiny sparks that collectively fueled fire to destroy the Empire. Rebels primarily focuses on the Spectre team. While it's not much of a rebel cell, they're more of a ragtag special operations unit and usually move around to meet different influential leaders. Rebels also shows that Ahsoka Tano, the ex-Jedi and former Padawan of Anakin Skywalker, going by the codename Fulcrum, is one of the leading players in creating organized resistance to the Empire. The next key arc is Mandalore. Sabine Wren, seen in the show and also in the Ahsoka trailer, is a Mandalorian from Clan Wren. She's the descendant of one of the most powerful families on Mandalore. Although it's not yet been covered in exquisite detail, the Great Purge of Mandalore is when the Empire laid waste to the planet and the vast majority of its population. During the Night of a Thousand Tears, seen in the Mandalorian, TIE Bombers almost utterly destroyed a planet. The Darksaber was also an ancient symbol of the Mandalorian rulership. Created by Tar Vizsla, the first Mandalorian Jedi, whoever had it could claim the title of Mandalore. 
the true leader of the planet. It was passed down through Vizsla's descendants, ending up in the hands of Pre Vizsla, the leader of Death Watch. Vizsla was bested and killed in combat by Maul, who also claimed a title for himself. After being beaten by Sidious, the Darksaber is lost for some years until Sabine Wren found it in the Night Sister lair on Dathomir, where Maul had left it. Sabine brought it back to Mandalore. Ashamed for her part in creating a super weapon that decimated her fellow warriors, she had been an Imperial student at the time. Although she leads her world to freedom and begins work uniting the clans, she's not ready for the mantle of leadership and passes the weapon freely to Bo Katane Kreese. Shortly after the Night of a Thousand Tears commences, in part led by Moff Gideon, he takes the Darksaber from Bo Katane and keeps it until he's defeated by Din Djarin. The next key arc is Kanan Jarrus. Kanan Jarrus was a young Jedi Padawan studying under Deba Balaba at Order 66 execution. The clone troopers quickly gunned down his master, who instructed him to run. Rebel sees Kanan, sporting a ponytail and a concealed lightsaber, fighting alongside Hera Syndulla. Together, he and Hera form the parental guidance aspect of the Spectres. You see, Kanan is strong with the Force, but he never completed his official Jedi training. Thus, when Ezra comes along and needs a teacher, he's highly hesitant. At first, he tries to find another Jedi to teach the reckless, arrogant young boy, but this only leads to understandable feelings of rejection from Ezra. Instead, Kanan realizes that he must teach the boy himself, passing on what he he knows. Kanan carefully instructs Ezra in the ways of the Force, telling him to be mindful of everything around him, especially his emotions. He can feel how much the boy struggles and often becomes frustrated. Nevertheless, he learns as much from his student as his student learns from him. At one point, Kanan is attacked by Maul, who blinds him. He thus becomes even more dependent on the Force and grows much stronger again. Eventually, Kanan dies protecting Ezra, Hera, and Sabine from a colossal fuel refinery explosion while rescuing Hera from captivity. He holds the explosion's blast back using the Force turning to look at his friend, the woman he loves, and his pupil he cared for one last time before pushing him away, only to be engulfed by the explosion. In this moment, his clouded eyes become clear, and his mind is set on the future. Next up, we have Ahsoka. Clone Wars saw Ahsoka train and grow under the mentorship of Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Captain Rex. When she opted to leave the Jedi Order after being falsely accused, she only returned jointly with Bo-Katan Kryze when she needed help from her old master and clone troopers in freeing Mandalore. On the planet, she, Rex, Bo-Katan, and the clone troopers defeated Maul and his fellow conspirators, only for Order 66 to be issued shortly after. Ahsoka freed Maul who escaped, and while she and Rex are forced to crash their star cruiser, killing all of their fellow troopers. Older, wiser, and more careful, she's coordinating alliances and creating connections between systems, laying the foundations for the later Rebel Alliance. Ahsoka still uses the Force, but declines to consider herself a Jedi. She'll still help train Ezra at various points and always protects him. During the Siege of Lothal, Ahsoka and Kanan both feel an intensely evil presence during the Ghost Narrow Getaway. She recognizes it as the mind of her old master, Anakin Skywalker. Later, in the Lothal Jedi Temple, a vision confirms it. She then travels to Malachor, searching for information to help them destroy the Sith. Here they find an old Sith temple, and confronted three Inquisitors, Maul and Darth Vader himself. Maul allies with Ahsoka, Kanan, and Ezra to defeat the three Inquisitors with relative ease. Meanwhile, he's almost convinced Ezra to become his apprentice, sending him into the temple with the Sith Holocron to activate the super weapon. After Maul betrays them, blinding Kanan, Ahsoka leaves them to fight while she goes to rescue Ezra. At the top of the temple, she finds Vader about to execute the boy and intervenes. She uses the force to push Ezra and Kanan clear, saving them but stays behind to duel Vader. Although it looks like she's been killed, something that Ezra carries with him for two long years, she in fact survived. Later, Ezra would open a portal to the world between worlds and pull Ahsoka through, preventing her death by Darth Vader. Thanking him, she returns to a different point on Malachor and flees. Later, Ahsoka joins the hunt for Ezra after he sacrifices himself in Kanan's example. That's where the Ahsoka series pretty much picks up. The last major arc is Maul. As previously mentioned, much of Maul's arc is tied in with Ahsoka and Mandalore. Since his return from madness and exile, all-consuming desire has been revenge. Revenge of the Jedi who took his legs, Obi-Wan Kenobi. He finally tracks down Kenobi on Tatooine. Living the life of an exile has aged Obi-Wan, something Maul has been too keen to point out. They then engage in a duel. Maul takes up his usual stance, as does Obi-Wan. However, he then shifts his position to emulate Qui-Gon Jinn's fighting style. Maul sees this but opts to remain with his current technique. He flies at Kenobi, slashing before trying to butt him in the face with his lightsaber handle, the method he used to kill Qui-Gon. However, Obi-Wan has anticipated this and brings his lightsaber down through Maul's hilt, slashing him across the torso. As he lies dying, he asks Kenobi if he's protecting the Chosen One, who would destroy the Sith. In the moment of respect for the hardship Maul's endured, Obi-Wan tells him that he is. In summary, Star Wars Rebels is almost flawless. 
And that's coming from someone who didn't even watch the show when it first came out. It's a profoundly moving story disguised behind simplistic plots. It's really all about Ezra, and through him, the rebels he influences and who influence him. His characters share striking similarities to the way Dave Filoni introduced Ahsoka. He begins naive, irritating, and cocky. He slowly grows into a mature rebel and Jedi. If I had to summarize Rebels quickly, I'd say it's all about family. Ezra loses his, and the resulting pain is an almost constant temptation toward the dark side for him, overcoming himself and thus becoming the Jedi he was always destined to be. He puts off selfishness and puts on kindness and self-sacrificial love, just like Kanan, following his master's example to the end. He lost his old family because they died trying to save him in their home planet. Now, he saved Lothal and his new family, the Spectres and the Rebels, through his own death-defying actions. So with all that being said, I really hope you consider watching Rebels.